TV with your girl Therapy, and I'm sitting here with an acting coach, Mark John Jeffries, y'all. What's up, Mark? What's going on, girl? Chilling, you know. Good. Not doing as good as you know. Doing all right. <laughs> you feel me? You're doing good as long as you feel it. Thank you. Yep. That's what's up. All right, so Mark, outside of the actor that we know, um, tell us about yourself. Like, what was your childhood like when you grew up? Uh, Girl, I've been acting ever since I was born. Like, I was three weeks old when I got my first gig, but I was born and raised in the Bronx. You know, okay. kept, kept around me when I was working on movies, still going home to the Bronx. It was my day to go home to the Bronx. So, like, my family, my parents made sure that my childhood was as normal as possible and that I wasn't getting big headed at a young age. So, and was it your family's idea to get you involved in acting? Well, it was my dad. Okay. Yeah, because my father, he was um director photographer when I was born. Mm -hmm. So he got me into print initially. And then print turned into commercials and commercials turned into movies. And then by the time I realized what was going on, I was already like 13, 14 and started in several movies. So it was just a part of life. Wow. And who would you say inspired you to keep on moving forward and develop your craft as an actor? Um, Nobody really, because when I was younger, like, it wasn't anybody that I really looked up to when I was around that age, like, mm -hmm. as far as acting and things like that. Right. It was literally like, it was just part of my life. Kind of like going to school, kind of washing up. It was just part of my life. Like, wake up, go to set. And once I understood, like, the, oh, I'm an actor, it was already embedded in me. So I didn't even look at it as nothing more than a job. And what motivates you to keep doing what you're doing every day? I mean, um, since birth. Growth. Growth. Growth is one of those, uh, acting is one of those things you can always grow at. And there's no premium level, there's no peak, there's no this is it. You can always grow. Denzel can still grow. Leonardo DiCaprio can still grow. So it's like, I always say sky is not the limit, it's just the beginning. So if you, if, like me, I'm a person, I like to challenge myself and I always like to feel that I'm reaching new heights and acting is just one of those things. So I guess it stokes my competitive ego. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And for the people out there who's wondering if that's how many movies you've been in, how many movies have you been in? I've been in 42 feature films to this day. Wow. Yeah, 42. 42 feature films. Mm -hmm. You're doing a damn thing. All right, so we're going to go down actors lane, you know. Okay, Let's start off by um, Losing Isaiah, which came out like in 1990. 94. 94. Yeah, I think 94. How old were you? I was born in 90. Oh, okay. How old were you? I was, I was four. Yeah, I was three when we started shooting and four when we finished. Years old. Yeah. Do you remember like that experience or does watching the, the movie on TV remind you? I don't watch the movie. I don't watch the Never? movie. Never? Yeah, I haven't even seen the whole thing in the Tories yet. You? I don't. I do not. Why? Because when I went to the premiere of um, Notorious, uh, Puffy introduced me to Russell Simmons. He just kept talking. So Jay Z turned and was like, yo, y'all got to get up out of here. So we went in the hall and was talking. So I never saw the whole movie. I just don't like watching my projects because I'm my own worst critic. So it's like when I look at stuff and I'm judging how I perform, I kind of get still trapped in that character and you want to be able to move on to the next, you know, so. Um, that makes sense. I, I, I didn't like, know it was like that, yeah, though. Yeah, yup. Wow. That's deep. Now, when you was four years old and losing Isaiah, you was already co-starring with some big names in Hollywood. Holly Berry, Samuel L. Jackson, and Cuba Gooding Jr. So, like, was did you feel, you know, pressure at all? Were you aware that you was, you know, co-starring? Because you was the title, you know, you was the main topic in the movie. I know, I, I wasn't even aware. I was so young, I didn't know what was going on. And it's like, I remember little vague things from the movie, more so from seeing pictures and my parents telling me like certain things that happened, but I, I didn't even know what was going on. Uh, uh, oh my God. Word. Well, I know you know this, and for the fans out there, Mark Jean tell me about Get Richard Dot trying. Uh, what was that experience like, and how did you land that one? Um, that was cool. Your Richard Shine, that was that was a good experience. Like, just working on set with a couple of established people. You know, Jim Sheridan was the director, and he had one of the, uh, I think he won an Academy Award for um, 
down in the Maris Bay and Mile Valley Port. So okay. that was like one of those projects. That was one of my first movies when I fully understood the scope of like what I do. Mm -hmm. And I landed the role just going in and audition and in the brick, like hustling. You know, so right. yeah. Okay. I mean, what was it like meeting 50 Cent? That was cool, because before I shot, I spent like a month with 50 out in Toronto. That's where we shot most of the movie in Canada. So I spent like about a month out there with him, just studying his mannerisms and paying attention to how he moved, how he spoke, and hanging around G-Unit dudes with him in the recording studio. So like, it was a different experience, you know? It was, it was different. Fun. I was gonna ask you that, because you did a great job. I mean, I appreciate it. I remember we went to the movies to see it when it came out, and I was like, damn, like, he looks like Little 50 Cent. He really yeah. talked like him. The whole nine, you did a great job. So, I guess you know that's part of acting. You have to study your craft. I'm sure y'all hung out and he told you yeah. stories about when he was little and stuff. So, that's what's up. Um, I'm sure everybody who has seen you in movies like Monster Zane, Brown Sugar, uh, Spider Man 2, and um, The Haunted Mansion, Eddie Murphy. Now, back. So I'm taking it back, you know. <laughs> I've been a fan of yours since Luke, and I'll say that. Uh, thank you, girl. Yeah, so like, how different was it for you to portray Little Seeds and Notorious now? Um, it, it was different simply because, like, it was a different extreme, you know? 50 was, 50's character was more, like, intense and quiet and, and more of an inner character, and Seeds yeah. was just crazy. Like, he yeah. was outward, he was clowning and having a good time in the movie, so, like, it was different as far as that, but what made them so similar is that I had both of the people that I was portraying actually there for me to, to question and watch and learn stuff from. It's a lot harder when you portray somebody that's, that's not around anymore. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah so. that. So do you feel like your role in Notorious helped you grow as an actor and mature? Because that's when you know people around the world, we, we didn't see you as a little boy. Mm -hmm. We saw you as a rapper from the hood. So yeah. you know, how was that, you know, um, that diversity? I still think that I'm still maturing when it comes to the industry, you know, because like C's character was only Cis was only 18 when Big died. Yeah, so yeah, when yeah. people saw the movie and they saw me playing it, they thought I was like supposed to be like 14, 15 when Biggie died. That was like one of the things. People was like, yo, Cis wasn't that young when Big died, but in all actuality, I was supposed to be 18 in the movie and I was 19 in real life. Alright, so outside of movies, let's talk about work you did outside of movies. Um, you were the oldest son on the Tracy Morgan show, which yeah. was, um, you know, premiering back in the day, a few years yeah. ago. So what was that yeah. like? That was cool. That was my first sitcom, me and the regular on, so mm -hmm. it was a lot different than I thought. You know, growing up watching shows like Fresh Prince of Bel Air and Family Matters yeah. and stuff like that, and then seeing how it's actually done, like Martin, seeing how it's actually done and being a part of it, that experience was crazy. Yeah. What was it like working with Tracy Morgan? She it was, was cool. So yeah, it was cool. You know, Tracy, uh -huh. at that time, Tracy was like that next up and coming comical name that was, uh -huh. that had momentum going and was just solidifying his spot. So to just be a part of that, like, era for his career was dope. Okay. Yeah. Tracy Morgan, that's Hustle Man. Yeah. Martin. <laughs> yeah. All right, so tell me, um, when it comes to movies and sitcoms, what do you notice? I'm sure there's a difference. You know, when it comes to filming and maybe the script, so what's, what do you notice the difference between the The main difference, like, is characters. When you do a movie, the character has an arc. The character goes through different emotions. The character normally has a range of beginning to end. On a sitcom, the character is pretty much consistent. It's like you may go through something on a particular episode, but for the most part, the character stays in the same range. And then it's like the consistency. It's harder, for me, it's harder to, well, I, I prefer to play more characters. That's what I, I like about acting, being able to portray different characters. So like, if I'm able to do four movies a year, I'm playing four different characters. But then when I'm on a show and I'm doing that same show for a year, two, three years, I'm that same character night in and night out. I have photographic memory, so like, I can, I read the script. I never read a full script, like beginning to end, and try to memorize it, because scripts change from day to day. You could have a scene, and that, that scene changes five minutes before you shoot it. So like, I never memorize the script from beginning to end, but if I'm going into an audition and I have the side, 
I literally, I'll build my character, I'll read it once, and then about 30 minutes before I go in the audition room, I'll read it again and I'll memorize it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So like, all right, how do you handle your popularity? You are a famous movie star, you're from the Bronx, and you live in New York City, so how do you handle your popularity when you're traveling and people come up to you and they recognize you? Well, I handle it by not saying I'm a famous movie star. I say that I'm a 24-year-old dude from the Bronx. I just happen to be an actor. And that's the way I handle it. Like, whenever you put that kind of title on yourself, you're a movie star. No, you're a person. Movies is just your you're job. It's not what you are. So whenever you put it into that perspective, it just helps you to not look at yourself like you're above people. And that's the main thing. Like, some celebrities just feel like they're above people because of what they've been told and what they continue to tell themselves. Oh, I'm a star. Look up star in the book. Like, they just name not going to be there. Like, they're not going to see your face. They're going to see that little thing in the sky. So, um, so as an actor, um, what do you think your strong points and weaknesses are if you ask them? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> First time I've ever been asked this. Uh, strong points and weaknesses. Uh -huh. I would say my strong point is my creativity. It's like, I'm the kind of person, you can tell me red, and I'll turn red into a person with a family and a background, and he had mothers and fathers, and he got a little nephew named Pink, and I'm just <laughs> that kind of person. Like, when I hear something, my brain runs. I'm good at, like, creating stories and stuff mentally, okay. and then being able to, like, portray what I have in my mind. I would say my weakness is that I'm so creative sometimes mm -hmm. that it gets the best of me. So, like... I'll start creating too much. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when I start performing it, I really have to concentrate on narrowing down my options. It, it's like, when you walk in the store and you want everything in the store, but you only got $2. Right. It's like, all right, what do I spend my money on? I don't know what to get. So now you gotta focus, like, all right, so I'm gonna get some Cheetos with Pepsi, but I don't know, that might get the gas. You know what, I'm gonna get a banana <laughs> now. I'm like, it's healthy. And then it's like, by the time you narrowed it down, you got two minutes so you gotta be at work. So, yeah. but it's a strength and it's a weakness at the same time. Tell us about the um, up and coming projects you're working on now. Okay, yeah, so. Yeah, I'm sure the people wanna know. Um, I have Brother Who Love coming out. That's one of Queen Latifah's productions. Okay. Um, it's starring myself, Kiki Palmer, uh, Romeo okay. Miller, okay. Um, Corey Hardrick, Malik Yoba. It's, it's a nice cast and it's like oh, young like Hollywood. Yeah, every, everybody in the project except for Corey, Malik, Macy Gray, and Faison Love is 24 and under. Mm. It's between 19 and 24. So like, it's, a, it's, it's gonna be crazy. It's a, it should be the next classic, like that next Boys in the Hood type class. Ooh. Yeah, it's gonna be dope. Classic. Yeah, it's gonna All be right. dope. Be sure to look out for Brotherly Love. Hell yeah. When's that dropping? I don't know yet. They still oh. going through editing, but Sony is the distributor, so it's gonna be big. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be big. Do you know if it's gonna be in theaters? Or yeah, it's gonna be big. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, look out for us for theater near you. Yeah, then I got Happy Baby coming out. Um, I have a okay. contest. I have Drug Affected. Um, right now, I'm working on chapter and verse. Then after I shoot that, I go on to No Black Girls Please. Mm -hmm. Then after No Black Girls Please, I go on to Lucy. And after Lucy, I shoot Kilroy Lips. So like, I got a lot going on. And now VH1 is trying to develop a scripted, um, comical reality show around me and my life as an actor. So mm -hmm. I got some, I got some things coming. Yeah, you know? that's so I don't know. <laughs> really, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, that's Alright, so with all you're doing as an actor in the future, you know, in this field, do you feel like you're gonna expand, you know, maybe do some directing, your own screenplay or what? Yeah, um I'm kinda dabbling in some of that now. Not necessarily directing yet, but more mm -hmm. so like producing and putting projects together. And um, I got a couple of short films that's in one was just in cons and um, another one probably gonna be in ABFF next year in the Sundance, so like I'm doing some of that, you know, I'm one of those people I like to like dabble in everything, but acting is my passion, so I don't I don't want to throw my focus off, yeah. but at the same time, I realize that there's a lot of talented actors out there and don't, mm -hmm. that don't necessarily get the opportunity to, to show what they're capable of, because mm -hmm. like, 
certain filmmakers and stuff like you know using the same people and that's there's nothing wrong with that you know right. if i have a friend and he's capable of playing a part of course i'm gonna choose my friend over a stranger if he's if he's capable of playing yeah so like i, I want to get to the point where i can put my friends on but i can also create opportunities for those actors that have the ability which has never been given an opportunity mm. so that's what i'm, I'm trying to work towards now okay yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay.